Welcome to this section on the Business Model Ontology or EA. My name is Paul Johannesson and I will give an introduction to REA, which stands for Resources, Events and Agents. I will introduce the basic concepts and show some applications. A starting point for understanding REA is to think about exchanges. Here is a concrete example. We have a subscriber who has a subscription from a publisher, which means that there is an exchange between these two parties. The subscriber gets a magazine delivered from the publisher, and in return, the publisher gets payment from the subscriber. This simple example can easily be made more general. Here we have two parties, a customer and a company, who are involved in an exchange. The company ships a product to the customer, and in return, the customer pays the company. This example has exactly the same structure as the previous one, but it's more general. Here is a minor extension of the example where we have introduced order lines so that a customer can order several different products within one single order. Let us consider the example once more and identify what kinds of entities that appear. Starting with a product, we can say that a product is a kind of resource, something that is of value to someone. We also have events that occur, like shipments of a product from the company to the customer, or the payment by the customer to the company. Both these are events that transfer resources from one agent to another. Finally, there are agents, in this example, a company and a customer. So, already in this small example, we have identified resources, events and agents. That is the three basic concepts that are given OREA its name. These basic concepts will turn out to be very powerful in modeling relationships and interactions between enterprises. And there's also a very simple intuition underlying the use of these concepts. This figure illustrates how you can think concretely about the basic concepts of REA and how they interrelate. We start with two agents that are in control of some resources. The first agent transfers her resource, some goods, to the other agent. The control of the resource has thereby moved from the first agent to the second one. In return, the second agent will transfer a resource, money, to the first agent. Again, we have the three basic concepts of REA here. Resources, here goods and money. Agents, that are capable of controlling and transferring resources. And events, that actually transfer and exchange the resources. We will now more precisely define the basic concepts in REA. First, we have economic resources, where an economic resource is something of value that is under the control of an agent and that can be transferred from one agent to another. Examples of economic resources are cash, goods and labor services. Typically, you can buy and sell economic resources, and you can put a price on them. Not all resources are economic resources, as some resources cannot be traded between agents. Certain resources are dependent on one agent, and they will exist only as long as that agent exists. For example, the knowledge and beauty of a person are dependent on that person and cannot exist outside him or her. Such resources or here called internal resources, as they exist within an agent. There are also resources that are dependent on two or more agents. That is, they can exist only as long as these agents exist. Such resources are commonly called relationships, for example a marriage or a citizenship. Relationships depend on more than one agent, for example if the husband or the wife in a marriage dies, then the marriage ceases to exist. Relationships are often highly valued and are therefore resources, but they cannot usually be bought or sold, so they are not 
economic resources. Economic events are about transferring value between agents. More precisely, an economic event is the transfer of control of an economic resource from one agent to another agent. Typical examples are payments or the shipments of goods. Often, an economic event is associated by the physical transfer of some object, but it doesn't have to. For example, when someone buys a piece of land, there is an economic event, but there is no physical movement involved. Finally, an economic agent is someone who is able to control economic resources and who is able to participate in economic events. An economic agent can be a person or an organization. Some examples are IBM, John Doe and the city of Stockholm. Economic agents can play different roles, for example, a manufacturer, distributor, carrier or consumer. We now return to the previous example where we had identified resources, events and agents. There is one special relationship between events that always occur in business contexts. Here, this relationship is between a payment and a shipment. It expresses that these two events should always occur as a pair. It should never be the case that just one of them occurs. The reason for this is that if the company delivers a product to the customer, then it should have a compensation for this in the form of a payment from the customer. Similarly, if the customer pays, then she should have a product delivered. So, there is a relationship between payment and shipment binding them together, and we call this a duality relationship. More generally, a duality is a relationship between economic events, expressing that if one agent wants to obtain an economic resource, then that agent must give up another economic resource. Or, as the saying goes, one good turn deserves another. Economic events always come in pairs. Another way of illustrating dualities is shown in this figure. First, we have a shipment of some goods from a company to a customer. Note that all three basic components of REA occur here, an economic resource, an economic event, and two economic agents. And economic events should always come in pairs so there would be a complementary payment from the customer to the company. The shipment and the payment are related to each other by a duality relationship. We can now introduce and relate the basic concepts in REA in an ontology. There are economic resources that are controlled by economic agents. There are economic events in which agents exchange resources. And finally, there are duality relationships that associate economic events. This figure illustrates how the previous example can be viewed by the REA ontology. There are two economic agents, a customer and a company. These agents participate in two economic events, a payment and a shipment, which are related to each other by a duality relationship. And these economic events relate to economic resources, the payment to cash, and the shipment to a product. Well, so much for the basic concepts in REA. But returning to our original example, we will see that some parts have still not been classified. We have classified most of the components in the example, but not yet order and order line. So what are these if we try to generalize? An order line essentially says that the company has committed to deliver a product and the customer has committed to pay for that product. There is an obligation for the company to deliver and for the customer to pay as a compensation for that delivery. We can think about an order line as a pair of commitments for the company to deliver and for the customer to pay. So we classify order line as a commitment. An order is essentially a grouping of a number of order lines with some additional rules attached. For example, saying what should happen 
if a shipment or a payment is delayed or if a delivered product is damaged. In such cases, there will typically be some kind of compensation or penalty. This means that we can view an order as a contract between the agents, specifying which commitments they have to each other, and in addition, the rules that govern in detail how these commitments should be fulfilled. So, we classify an order as a contract. We define an economic commitment as an obligation for an agent to perform an economic event in the future. For example, an order line, which actually represents two commitments, for one agent to deliver something and for another agent to pay. A contract is a container for a collection of commitments, with additional rules specifying how the commitments should be fulfilled, in particular rules for handling exceptions and deviations. An example is a purchase order with several line items. We are now in a position to complement the previous basic REA ontology. We have now the economic contract, which groups together a number of economic commitments. Note that there is a relationship fulfills between economic events and economic commitments. This means that when an economic event is carried out, it fulfills an economic commitment. For example, when a customer pays, she thereby fulfills her previous commitment to pay. After the payment, the commitment doesn't exist anymore. We also have that an economic commitment reserves an economic resource type. Before explaining this, we will make a short digression. We will make a distinction between different kinds of objects, and we distinguish between two levels the operational level and the knowledge level. On the operational level, we have concrete, tangible objects, objects that are born, that change, that die, objects that you can see and touch. Examples could be food, furniture and animals. These are the objects that you will find around in the physical world. On the knowledge level, on the other hand, you will find information structures that characterize and prescribe the structure and behavior of objects at the operational level. Typical examples are blueprints and musical scores. A blueprint can specify how a building should be constructed. It governs the structure and layout of the building. And this holds generally for objects at the knowledge level. They function as templates for objects at the operational level. This way of thinking about knowledge level objects as templates is illustrated in this figure. Consider a meal and a recipe. The meal is something concrete and tangible, you can eat it, it's on the operational level. The recipe on the knowledge level can be seen as a, as a template for a meal. It tells which ingredients the meal should contain and how it should be prepared. Of course, two meals prepared from the same recipe can still differ a bit from each other, but overall, the recipe determines what the meal will look like. The same goes for a car and a car model. The car on the operational level is a physical object. You can touch it and drive it. The car model works as a template specifying the general features of the car, like how many doors it has. A final example is the difference between a book and a book copy. The book copy is a physical object made of paper, which you can touch and carry around. The book on the knowledge level is a piece of art, for example, Moby Dick by Herman Melville. The book is essentially a sequence of words or a sequence of symbols. These symbols can then be materialized in physical book copies in different ways. For example, there may be hardback or paperback copies. In this way, the book works as a template for the book copies. We now turn to another application of the REA ontology, value process graphs. These are diagrams that take an internal perspective, that is, they take the perspective of a particular organization, and they identify the major processes in that organization. For each process, the graph tells what economic resources that it consumes and produces. The graph also shows how the processes 
are related with respect to 